Hi, I'm John. And I'm Chris. We're at Chimney Cricket TV. Today we're going over firebox repairs, the importance of them structurally, and why they're, they're, uh, it's a safety issue with chimneys. Um, Chris, what are the important things that you need to do first when you're determining a firebox? Well, you want to strength, uh, strengthen durability. Um, you can basically tell if a firebox has been overburnt and just general deterioration through burning and how much the customer burns. Or it's through not having a chimney cap and it's water pulling up on the back side of the smoke shelf and pulling down inside and just making the deterioration of the uh, mortar. Water is a big deter deterrent from uh, keeping out of fireboxes. I notice here that this firebox needs a little bit of repair work. What exactly is entailed with repairing this firebox? How far should the mortar joint go back? When does a homeowner really know that they need a firebox repair? Well, basically, we need to take back the mortar joint at least an inch, and we have to use a high temperature mortar. And you always want to wet down your mortar joints before you apply the new flue goo. This is an example of a deteriorated firebox. A deteriorated firebox can happen when excessive burning or not having a chimney cap. That's why having a chimney cap is very, very important. And to prevent your firebox from deteriorating, you also can use a heat reflector. All right, Chris, tell the homeowners and the viewers out there what we did today. Well, basically I ground and tucked one of the firebox. And basically what I did is I took a diamond blade grinder and ground the mortar joints back to about a half of an inch to an inch. Uh, then you moisten, you moisten all the mortar joints so you get a good bond and then basically use high temperature cement and you restore the mortar joints. Now in this case you want to do a, you, you want to be clean about it but the cleanliness in this point you just want to make sure that those joints are packed in real good because again you're using a, uh, a, a goo or a, or a clay to restore the firebox which is uh, you need something high temperature. And we definitely recommend curing this after you get done with a warm fire. Uh, it basically hardens the uh, flue goo and, the, and it makes it make sure for, of not shrinking. And so the moisture doesn't get absorbed by the brick and it cures right away. So we definitely recommend heating your mortar joints after you tuck point a firebox with flue goo or any kind of a clay. Chris, now what would happen if uh, we didn't do a repair like this and it continues to get worse? What, what, what's some of the possible uh, things that could happen uh, to a firebox if you were not to do a repair like this? Well, basically you're going to get the bricks that are going to need to be relayed at one point. They start sliding with the expanding and attracting of the heat and the fire. The bricks actually loosen up to a point to where they're going to have to be rebuilt. And rebuilding a firebox is a lot more expensive than restoring a firebox. Uh, so getting nipping it in the bud, uh, onto prevention, an ounce of prevention equals a pound of cure in this case. You will save yourself a lot of money and heartache by restoring and keeping up on your firebox than just letting it go. Firebox repairs from Chimney Cricket. Whether you do it yourself or you want to hire us to have it done, just as another service from Chimney Cricket. Absolutely.